Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we are playing Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, and of course we're going to talk about the big elephant in the room, the thing that's been on everyone's mind recently about banners, and that is going to be Prime Illustrated Roxas. So we already have Illustrated Shion EX, we have Prime Illustrated Axel, so of course they're going to add an Illustrated Roxas in there, and it just so happens to be the first Tier 5 uh, Prime Metal that they're going to release for us. So... Right now, where we are in this game, let me just get this one little tidbit in before we start talking about the banner. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven temporary banners. And when I thought about that in my head, I'm like, wow, seven temporary banners that are going on all at the same time right now. And I was like, you know what? We're going to do like a nice comparison and see how it goes. So we have, in terms of events, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six temporary events and we have seven temporary banners right now. And that is just very strange that you have more pullable content than you have actual content to use said pulls for. It's really strange and it's kind of upsetting to be perfectly honest that they're just slapping down banners left and right. It becomes very confusing for people to really say like, yes, you should pull for this. No, you shouldn't pull for this because it feels like things are just getting one-upped so quickly that your investment has value for more or less like two weeks two three weeks and then it gets replaced and it's just really strange i don't like it it's a bad direction for the game right now because people spend money for that money to be essentially wasted and they need to spend more money again not too far after they already spent a huge chunk of money so that's just a really bad business plan in my in my personal opinion um of course whales will be whales and all the money that whales pour into union cross more than compensates in terms of a business decision more than compensates for all the free-to-play players that aren't pulling from these banners so to have some person like let's just say any random whale that pulls like a gajillion times on one banner and let's say they just spend like 800 bucks just to put a number on it that is already infinitely more useful to the company than a free-to-play player who spends zero dollars and just pulls and just can't get all the medals i don't know i don't like it it's a bad decision plan it's very i feel like it's it's sort of nice in terms of options but i feel like it's almost disrespectful to players to throw out more things that they have to spend out money for rather than things that they can do in the game rather than things that they can actually play the game for so personal opinion of where we're at right now is we're not doing too hot in terms of the game itself um and it's kind of up to us as a community to try and keep each other together without getting super upset without trying to yell down square annex's throat without trying to yell at the pr chairs who have done nothing um so make sure your voice is heard and if you really d don't like the direction of the game rate it on google plus right now or rate it on the app store um and i feel like that's a numerical assessment of the community's views towards the game and it's reflected in a means that people can see people can rate it's numerical you can't really just be like oh this game is bad or oh this game is good you know if you rank it and give it a number then people really understand what's going on and how people really feel uh, so anyways that's my little mini rant before we actually get started about the banner here uh, so let's go ahead and do our banner analysis first so whoa let's not do that first <laughs> um let's go into the details of this banner so i'll just leave this up because i actually don't want to like just read straight through the banner i'm just going to point out all the parts that i think are pretty relevant to uh what's going on right now all right so let's leave this pretty picture up and then talk about the banner so first of all this is the first of its kind where it's going to introduce seven star tier fives in every poll now that's not to say like what was it about a month a month and a few days ago or maybe like two months ago i'm not really sure but it's like they released the tier fours in every draw now we're getting tier fives so people that whale are going to be replacing all their sub slots again with tier fives they're going to be doing a lot of weird stuff because now all their tier fours that they invested into, that they put skills on, that they leveled up, that they put like into their sub slots, all that stuff, it's gonna be sort of shifted more so that they have to do it all over again with tier fives. 
So that's kind of a, uh, it's nice that we get tier fives. I definitely think it helps the game right now because people with the complaining about ticks and stuff, if they keep advancing to the point where you're almost getting like a tier seven in every draw, that's essentially gonna make the ticket system, which everyone's been complaining about, sort of useless. So the closer we get to higher tiers being guaranteed in each pull, the better we are in terms of complaining about the tickets because the tickets only allow you to uh, level up a certain number of metals, but if you can get those same metals in pulls, it'll actually work out better for certain people. So just keep that in mind that the faster we progress through a guaranteed tier X, so tier 5, tier 6, tier 7, in every pull, the closer we get to eliminating the problem with PvP, which is the ticket system. Um, not to say that there aren't any other problems, but that's really the big elephant in the room in my opinion. Um, another thing is that the tier 5 7 star that comes in each pull comes with a skill. Now, I read through this a few times, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, we don't get a list of what skills it could possibly be. So, the closest thing I think that I saw was somewhere around here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? See, it's somewhere in here. This, this thing is so lost, or this is so big that it's like... It's kind of hard to find certain stuff. Um, see, I can't even find it right now, and I already I just looked at it not too long ago. Uh, let's see. Alright, see, I know it says you get a skill somewhere, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't tell you what skills are available, and it's not in the draw odds. But from what I've seen, you can get attack boost 6 max, attack boost boost 5 max Lux Plus, attack boost 5 max SP0, and then I want to guess that it's uh, either defense boost one max 1, 2, or 3, and then triple threat 2. So I'm not really sure. It'd be helpful if they gave us a list, uh, but with what we've got right now, that's what I think's on the table. I've seen the attack boost maxes, but not the defense boost or the triple threat, so I'm not really sure which defense boost maxes are available in this deal right now. Uh, but... Another point of interest when it comes to analyzing the banner is that we're only going to be getting the trait medal for Prime Illustrated Roxas in each pull. So different from all the banners that came before this one in terms of Primes, you're not getting one Prime per pull. You're getting one trait medal per pull. And that was a big upset for some people because we're not going to talk about it here. They made a slight mistake right at the beginning where they showed the colored metal being guaranteed as a 6-star in each pull, then they withdrew it, put up a new banner where they had the uh, the trait metal put up in its place. So, it kind of sucks that unlike before, where you can guarantee yourself a prime metal, and then you could work hard in PvP to bring it up to 7-stars, this doesn't really give you that option to do the one pull and then work really hard. This essentially makes you do the 5 for the guaranteed metal. So that's something I don't like about this banner already, um, but it is what they're giving us. We haven't gotten a notice about any sort of fix uh, as far as I know. If they posted something on Reddit, just let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to read it over. Uh, but that kind of stinks um, in terms of the actual banner itself. One other note for the banner that makes it sort of special is that we get VIP coins. And this is really interesting because they kind of simultaneously release this with a new VIP board, which makes this banner actually more worth pulling, in my opinion. Just because uh, a lot of good stuff is lower on the board, and that means you have to have uh, only a certain number of VIP coins in order to access them. So that's super sweet. Let's actually just go to the board right now, and I will show you what I mean. So if we go to the VIP board, this is the new board that we got. Oop, that's not the one. Um, okay, that's not what we're looking for. I don't know why this is the details of the board, uh, but going into the board itself, so one pull gets you 10 VIP coins, and that first pull is gonna get you a magic mirror, the second pull gets you a power gem, the third pull gets you a speed gem, the fourth pull gets you a magic gem, and then the mercy pull gets you up to a moon gem, which is pretty valuable right now, considering that they don't really give us a lot of means of getting moon gems. So if you do a five mercy pull, you also guarantee yourself four total gems, a power speed, magic, and a moon. And again, moon gems are very, very valuable at this point, because they don't really give them out. So that's super important to know that this banner sort of pairs with the VIP board itself. Alright, let's go ahead and scroll down to the metal and start talking about that. So this metal is 
nuts. This metal is crazy, and I feel like it's almost game-changing, especially if this is the direction that they want to take with, like, metals from this point on. So essentially, this type of metal, the Tier 5 Prime Metals, almost completely usurp the Tier 4 Metals. So... They almost do. Again, there's like pluses and minuses here and there, uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the metal itself. So the metal is just so overpowered that they had to start throwing in more abbreviations into the uh, metal description. So now instead of targets reverse defense and magic defense separately, it's just an R and then an M, and they smash that together. Um, they put SP attack B plus 80%, so that's special attack bonus plus 80%. Um, they have damage plus, which I guess is like the way they're going to be describing focusing damage, which does more damage the less amount of enemies you're attacking. So I guess that's what they're doing too. And then they started to add this new abbreviation, CD unaffected. They're going to have to start thinking about different ways to describe these metals because when I read through this, the description sometimes, when it's just playing you know you put the metal up and then it just plays the description it's just like zooming through a bunch of text and it's like oh my gosh i can't even keep up so they're gonna have to think of a new way to display special attacks how they kind of list it um i think it would be better if we had like a standard abbreviations list and then go from there similarly to how khux tracker has their sort of abbreviated description of the buffs on the side i really think that union cross needs to move to something a little bit easier especially for people that are esl so english as a second language because if they're if it's hard to understand english then it's only that much harder to understand abbreviations. So using symbols, I feel like, is the right way to go in terms of describing these special attacks now. Uh, but anyways, aside from the fact that it's a whole laundry list of uh, new buffs and stuff like that, this is the first Tier 5 Prime Metal, and it's Reverse Blue. So I'm not super hot on Reverse Blue. There aren't too many slots that use it. Uh, let me actually pull up a sort of a diagram that I used to... Or like a chart that I use to like pretty much describe it. Um, so if we look at a reverse blue, on the multicolor blades, it only exists on Moogle of Glory in the fourth slot and Fairy Stars in the second slot. Uh, but on the monocolor blades, of course, you see it multiple times on Diamond Dust and uh, here and there on Three Wishes, and then only once in Counterpoint. So I'm not too much of a fan on using reverse blue, especially since this metal could technically be seen as a buffer metal, so you'd want to put it earlier on in order to buff the rest of your stuff downstream. Uh, so it works really well in Diamond Dust. You can argue it would work well in Fairy Stars if you have enough copy metals to make a uh, sort of more or less a reverse-centered blade. Or if you have, you know, like Kex Plus, then don't worry about it, because then you could probably just fix it all with Kex Plus, mixed in with uh, Illustrated, uh, Roxas, the Prime Metal. But yeah, Reverse Blue isn't really doing too hot right now, in my opinion. Um, so that's kind of a problem, in my opinion. You can put in the Pet Slot, which is totally fine, uh, because this metal has pretty much all the buffs it needs. So that it can go in the pet slot and still fit pretty seamlessly into a lot of setups. Um, so it does get the pet skill plus one magic strength, which is really important because again, when you activate anything that boosts an attribute strength, if you have the pet skill, so if your pet is rank nine, let's actually just go to it really quickly here. Uh, so we will go to tricks. Once it hits rank nine, you get. Or I'm sorry, maybe it's rank 8. I believe it's actually rank 8. Um, but you get these guys here. So, whenever you activate something that raises your magic strength, for example, and it activates it to plus 7, the pet skill will bring it up to plus 8. So that's super important for squeezing out extra damage there. Uh, going back to the metal itself, one thing to note about its effect is that in terms of what it's missing, because it's really not missing a lot, uh, it's missing giving you any sort of strength up, so your general strength needs to come from a different buffer metal, and it's still missing minus two reverse defense down, or I'm sorry, minus two defense down. So as you can see, the seven star there says uh, def five, so it's going to decrease the general defense down of all targets by five, and that's still too short. So keep in mind that in terms of what it's missing, it is missing those two things there. Uh, but looking at what it does do, man, this thing is nasty. It gives reverse defense down minus 7, and that's important because 
if you look under target it says all it hits all targets and gives them all minus seven reverse defense which is super good which is honestly ridiculous um that you have something that just almost does a complete buff it's almost like um Xion ex level Xion ex plus level that and that's just honestly crazy uh and let's see here moving down to uh, down the list of this metal's crazy buffs it gives a special attack bonus percentage of 60 percent at as the six star version and then 80 percent as the seven star version that is huge plus 60 percent is a lot already and then when you bring it up to a seven star it get it becomes plus 80 percent the only thing that matches that right now is having Kyrie ex plus or Xion ex plus right now so that's a very very good hole to fill for people that don't have Kyrie ex plus or people that don't have Xion ex plus so to have that makes it a really solid substitute for people that don't have those metals that currently have not existed as a mercy so far um going down the laundry list again it restores gauges plus three so it just says gauge plus three uh, but it restores gauges plus three so you have to have the six to activate it so under gauge cost it's six so you have to have the six to activate it but after the activation you get three of those gauges back so it's sort of like also a healing metal and if you slap an sp zero skill on this thing so let's say you get attack boost seven max sp zero and then this metal has extra attack as a trait on it you're effectively healing plus six gauges in one turn so that already helps with some gauge restoring especially when it comes to pvp and you need to pay attention to your gauge restoring so that's honestly really really good it gets again that focusing damage that damage plus one where the lower number of enemies that you're attacking the higher the special attack is going to be so it's going to go from that damage multiplier of 23.85 when there's multiple enemies to 35.90 when there's only one enemy and that's super critical for a pvp where you're only fighting one enemy so you're going to be clocking out that 35.9 multiplier and that's a lot of damage that is a crazy amount of damage um so it's honestly after going through all that stuff and then the countdown's unaffected oh my gosh that's the last part of it countdown unaffected so if you put this towards the beginning of your blade you don't have to worry about its buffs like decreasing the enemy countdown because it leaves it unaffected similarly to how the foretellers whenever you use their special attack left the countdown unaffected so there's very very little reason to not proc this metal every single time that you have the opportunity to there's very little downside the enemies are not going to revenge counter you it gives you a whole slew of buffs it hits all enemies sp attack bonus up like that is crazy this metal has so many buffs that it's almost unfair um so let's see what else do we want to talk about in terms of this metal um it's a solid option all around for any sort of scenario pvp it gets that 35.9 percent 35.9 uh damage multiplier and it's a buff metal so even if you get the six star version you're still getting a whole slew of buffs so even if you don't have the seven star version you're not using it to clock out damage you only have the six star version you put it towards the beginning of the blade bam instant buffs like that's a lot going on for this metal right here and it's really crazy that they drop something on this or drop something on us like this all right let's move to the draw odds so a few things that you should know about the draw odds here is that you can still pull the six star version of it so let's go ahead and move down to the six stars these are all the seven stars you could pull here's the six stars okay move into the top because they usually put at the top all right for prime illustrated roxas it's a 0.06261 chance of pulling the uh six star version which is kind of funny because they say special attack boost zero but it should be three i believe they said it came three orbed in the original banner um so that's a in terms of chances the chance of drawing one is one every 1597 pulls so that's a lot there no one's gonna do 1597 pulls uh but just know that the option exists there moving down just even two slots you can still get Kyrie 
EX plus and then Xion EX plus in this banner. Uh, the chances of getting those, like at least one of them, so either Kyrie EX plus or Xion EX plus, is gonna be one every 3,994 pulls. So if you get it from the pulls, uh, consider yourself extremely lucky. Um, another thing to note here is that you are able to pull into the uh, T uh, T5 <laughs> tier 5 EX medals. So let's take a look here. Uh, if we go all the way down, bam, right there. You can get Kingdom Hearts 2 Cloud EX, Axel Art EX, or Sora Art EX, which again are EX medals and the game is not obligated to throw them into the pool system without giving us a notice. They did not give us a notice, but it does exist in the draw odds, so keep that in mind there. And of course, with all Prime banners, they have all the other Prime medals in here as well. So let's go ahead, scooch on up to our seven stars. Is this our seven stars? Yeah, this is totally our seven stars. Um, Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There's just so much stuff going on here. They should really like have a drop down thing for like if you want to pull tier threes this is what you can get all right here it is so all the other previous primes minus the toy story ones are in here right now so illustrated axel key art 17 uh, kingdom hearts 2 riku and mickey Le lee and isa young xanort they're all in here so you can potentially pull into them granted the draw odds are really really slim uh when i cranked out the math it actually comes out to you get one of them every 12,453 pulls. So the chance of getting just one of them is one every 12,453 pulls. In terms of what's relevant, so when you pull for this banner, you obviously want the Roxas. Your chance of getting the Roxas as uh, your 7 star medal is going to be one every 128 pulls. So that's actually not too bad, but you'll get it within 5 pulls. So you, while it's still like better odds than the other things I described, it's still kind of steep. All right. So let's get to the last part of these videos where we talk about the additional thoughts. So one thing to note about this banner and this medal is that it still gets for the last two days, which is relevant for PvP, it gets the seven star reverse booster. So it's gonna get an extra plus 40%, bringing it up to almost a little bit higher than a tier six medal. And that's really good, especially since Diamond Dust is in the PvP pool right now and to have this thing get even more strength on top of the strength that it's getting it's gonna get plus 80 percent from itself plus 40 percent from this starting off at 150 it's gonna bring it up to 270 percent extra special attack bonus or it's gonna bring up to 270 percent special attack bonus and that's crazy that's a lot that is like prospectively what tier 10 is gonna be for us so that's honestly ridiculous, and that's a huge strength boost, especially for people that plan on using this medal for PvP. I'd assume that all the top 10 players already have this on there. Uh, what else here? So one thing, I think this is an important point to note, that if Illustrated Roxas is the reverse blue version of this medal, then it's very likely that Illustrated Nomine is going to be the upright blue version, and that, I think, is going to be a fantastic investment, because going back into the Keyblade slot colors, here we go, so upright blue just has a lot of spaces where it fits, meaning that it might actually be better to wait for Illustrated Nomine Prime, so that's what I think I'm going to be saving for, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but just a heads up on my thoughts for the future there. Um, another thing to note about this banner is... They're really trying to push for VIP coins, which I don't like. I don't like the VIP boards as they stand right now. In Japan, they did the VIP boards better, where you can get avatars, and then I believe your VIP coins carried over from one banner to the next rather than expiring. Uh, so I'm not really sure what the direction of VIP coins is. I'm going to have to wait it out a little bit and see what that direction is going to be. Uh, moving down, moving down. It pairs well. That metal pairs very well with any reverse metal. So, or I'm sorry, with any reverse stained glass. So the reverse stained glass will fill the holes that this metal leaves, which is gonna be the plus seven general strength up, and then that extra minus two general defense down. Stained glasses give minus three general defense down. So if you pair a reverse stained glass with this metal, you're getting perfect reverse buffs. So that's really, really good. And in two metals too, that's honestly saying a lot. 
Um, moving on to the last part of my additional thoughts. I keep saying like moving on to like the last part, uh, but after this is the recommendation. So moving on to the last part of my additional thoughts. This was honestly kind of a sloppy move in my opinion to release this metal so shortly with or like so close to prime young xehanort because prime young xehanort's effect if we go to it is going to be uh for two turns increase reverse strength by three strength by seven speed strength by four and then decrease targets reverse defense and speed defense by three and defense by four so to put these two metals back to back is kind of like i don't really get it um obviously the the Roxas is way more superior to the Xehanort. Granted, the Xehanort does fill the strength gap, and it does last for two turns, which can be important for PvP, and making sure your buffs, you have, like, to do less buffs per turn, essentially. But it kind of feels like almost a slap to the face for the people that pulled five times in the young Xehanort banner, when they could have pulled five times from the Roxas banner. So that's kind of a goofy move, and I don't really like it, um, because... If you don't have good concept of this game and you're like just joining or you're not in like a bunch of the groups or discords Then you kind of just pull on this because it's the most recent thing thinking it's gonna last you for a while And then boom they drop something that's like almost significantly better So I don't really like that they did that um, It's kind of just it honestly makes it even seem more like a money grab than it already was before So to the final part of this video the recommendation what I think is that you don't need to pull right now. So this banner is up for eight more days. You have eight total days to decide if you want to pull for it. So unless you really, really need this medal, like let's say you really love Roxas as a character and you really want this medal, or you want it in order to stay super relevant in PvP or to finish up those last Coliseum rounds, unless you really need it, you can wait. Because if they keep pulling goofy stuff, where they keep giving us prime banners that are so frequent that they're on top of each other then you can always see what the next prime banner is before you pull for this one as long as you kind of like know where you're at and decide if you want to pull then you're fine uh, but as long as they keep one-upping us as long as the game is so quickly evolving that it becomes difficult to decide where to pull you can wait you don't need this right now again reverse blue is kind of a hard decision to make uh, just because it's again the slots they just don't fit the slots very well um, so hold out for now if, unless you really need it uh, if you are planning on pulling try to aim and I almost say try as in like it's mandatory to aim for the five mercy pull so I know some people have gotten it in the first like two three pulls and that's great that is fantastic congratulations on your early prime illustrated Roxel Roxel Roxas um, but for most people, unless you can guarantee you can pull five times before the banner ends, I would recommend not pulling, holding off for the time being, and again, waiting out those few days until you say to yourself, like, okay, you know, what's coming up might not be as good as this, might as well sink it right now. So always aim for the five mercy, but if you get it earlier, then that's super awesome, congratulations. Uh, remember when it comes to things that you can guarantee yourself? It's always best to go with avatar boards. So 3,000 jewels for one pull that nets you a trait medal, and if you can't do any more, then you're stuck. Or you could use those 2,000 jewels to get an avatar board, get three guaranteed skills, a guaranteed gem, and you still have 1,000 jewels after that, or like 500 jewels after that, and if the board's like 2,500. Uh, but the idea is that avatar boards are probably the best guarantee you can get in this game for your jewels. Uh, moving on, that's actually it. That's actually the end of my notes here. All right, so that's a long video. That's a lot to be said. I know I haven't done any polls, so people that were expecting polls, I'm sorry. I don't plan on polling for this until I absolutely decide if I need it. I want to see if that illustrated nominee is going to come out because that, in my opinion, is going to be way better than this because Upright Blue just has way more things going on for it right now. Uh, but they're always going to make Nominee like a copy metal because that's just like her thing. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I believe it's going to be Illustrated Nominee, but I am always willing to be proven wrong. 
All right, with that being said, that's the end of this video. For everyone who watched the full way through, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. It was a long video, so I hope if you watched it, you times two it, like times two speed at the bottom of YouTube there. Um, and I hope that it was a lot of useful information when it comes to helping make your decision. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to drop them down in the comments below, and I would be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. But as always, everyone, until the next video, take it easy.